What's good? Welcome back to the Pop Off Podcast, a conversation show about drafting from MGK, the artist formerly known as Machine Gun Kelly, the artist who was formerly a rapper and is now a pop punk sensation. I'm Ralph Campiano. I'm your host. I'm joined as always by my co-host, Mike Cerrone. Cerrone, you've been waiting on this for a while, buddy. Uh, it's finally here. <laughs> it's I your can't. time to shine, man. Go Look, ahead. I'm... Talk your shit. Oh, I don't <sighs> to say, man. I can't wipe the smile off my face. Um, dude, I'm here with my three best friends, and we're about to talk about my favorite person in the universe behind <laughs> Billy Joel and maybe Lamar Jackson for a whole two fucking hours however long this goes but yeah um yeah this is my favorite artist of all time i know this guy inside out that sounds pretty weird Uh um but yeah dude this is like this is the the best possible scenario we got you connor tara um super fans i feel like i kind of made them super fans a little bit but you forced it onto them like you do everybody else yeah fucking yeah dude i've been like 12 11 12 years so um. Yeah, I'm fired up. I can't wait to just talk about this. This dude yeah. for a couple Can hours. Can I just say this blast. podcast has like consumed my mind for the past three days? It's simply all I've thought about. This is like the peak of my career. Tara's prepared. Like, you take this shit exactly. serious. Like you've been like thinking about oh. it. You've been like making yeah, boards, mock drafts, around. the whole thing. The shit that I've done. I can't it's wait. What about you, my mind. Well, you know, I'd say How my uh, over there? my music taste. I have a uh, a very wide variety in uh, in music mm-hmm. taste. You know, we got Drake and uh, you got Wayne, all these guys. But um, you know, MGK's got bangers on bangers on bangers, and uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. I got my I got my list ready to go. I've been rough drafting, maybe not as much as Tara, because she's been taking it. <laughs> Uh, pretty pretty seriously for the last three days. But... Oh, I've been taking drives, going on the treadmill to feel it out that way. Did you re-listen to all his like old stuff? Like just started no, from the beginning. I just like I was in between so many songs for categories that like I would have to take it to the car. I would have to take oh. it to the treadmill to like really you feel, feel it out. out. Yeah, I had yeah. to feel it out. I, I know a lot of. Seriously. That's a always the most interesting way that people for prepare for it, though. Like, categories. Yeah, I mean, it's he's really versatile. Like the categories are kind of loose this time around because he's made mm-hmm. like such a stark shift in his music and his sound. And not to say that he isn't versatile, because he obviously is. He went from a fucking rapper to somebody who like worships Sublime. So I think that's fascinating. But like, Mike, what was your preparation for this? Like, like did you dive through the albums? Because when I've done artists in the past. I go through front to back the whole fucking thing. And I tried to do that with him. I did a couple of albums, but then some of his older stuff, I just kind of bounced around with my familiarities. What was your preparation? Like Tara said, yeah, she's on the treadmill be- driving in the whip. Were you just, you know, talking to yeah, 15 year old chicks with I it start- in your head? <laughs> oh boy. No, I, uh, I mean, dude, I know this guy so well. Um, this is all kind of like, I just wrote this down. Like, 30 minutes before I already knew everything that I was going to pick and and talk about. Um, I keep him on rotation like 24 seven, like all the time I'm listening to him. So I didn't, I I went back. I didn't want to miss any uh, like good ones. So I went back. I mean, I'm always playing his old stuff. Um, Like not like really old, like lace up and general admission, but like, um, like bloom, all those albums. Uh, Like I dabbled today, like back and forth, but like all my favorite stuff from him is just mainstream sellout tickets to my downfall. So it's really going to be from those two albums. And then yeah. I got a couple little surprises. And then uh, like we have been, me, Tara and Connor have been to like three or four MGK concerts together, which I guess we'll talk mm-hmm. about, but like, yeah, the wild cards and the moments, like, oh, I'm I so just excited fucking, to get into those. Yeah. There's nothing more than I, like if I could be in one spot, if I could relive like any moment, it'd be fucking, just give me as many MGK concerts as possible. Just yeah. make yourself out, taking my downfall. Just faded, having a blast, singing every single word to every single song. Like, yeah, dude, I I, I got this. So he brings, like, the charisma when he's performing. He's, like, all about it. Like, he's dude, one of those so guys good. where when you see him in person, you're like, I feel vindicated and justified for my fandom because he just makes it that much better in person. Because I remember when I saw I Travis Scott song. for the first time, I was like, oh, fuck. I was totally right. Like, this guy's the hip-hop messiah. Like, he just 
gives you a whole other level of adrenaline. What's an MGK show like? Because I have a buddy who in high school had been to two concerts in his life, and they were both MGK concerts. And now this is like Wild Boy MGK. This is like Lace Up MGK. This is before the Pac Pump like kind yeah. of era that's like it has to be a totally different show now right like is he like playing guitar does he have a band with him is the light show going crazy or is he like making out with chicks in the audience what's his vibe like in while he's performing do you want me to answer this again whoever well, flies you, in you, in you guys all fucking been to him like does that yeah. what yeah. what do you mean he flies in on a helicopter he just arrives in a helicopter he flies in oh, from right. the helicopter Oh, I'm yeah. staring up at the ceiling. I'm like closing my eyes. I'm crying. It's dramatic on my part. <laughs> but like that's yeah, what so I'm feeling. He literally so my first concert ever when I was in eighth grade was MGK at Lupo's. Like this small little concert in or Tara knows, Lupo's. Yeah. It's like this like little, little tiny like ghetto ass like theater in Providence. Mm -hmm. And it was like wild boys, him going nuts. I was so scared. I was like this little 13 year old kid that like didn't, didn't hit puberty yet. And I was just like, I was like so high up just sitting down, just like I didn't even stand up the whole conference concert. I was so scared because there was like, like I went in the bathroom, there was like drugs being done. I've never even seen blow before. And I was like freaking out. Uh, and then every, if, when he comes in for the mainstream cell tour, he flies in on a helicopter. There's like a big pink helicopter, and oh. there's like a huge pink ladder. Oh, that, yeah. And, and he, he, he flies in hanging onto the ladder singing yeah. uh what born with horns like the first song in the end, and it's just legit like insanity and oh. bro he's rocking it out he's like he does like stand-up comedy while he's up there he's got a whole band a whole stage um and dude he's like climbing shit like when we went to see him uh like the first time in la he like climbed up like i mean like 20 30 feet on that tower remember and yeah. he's like hanging upside down like the guy's a fucking the guy is not afraid to die. I'll say that. Like he's just do you remember an absolute I, um, lunatic. Do you remember when I painted the helicopter? I was like a little manic one day, and I like went, I'm not a painter. I went yeah, to like the... an art store. I bought an easel and like paint <laughs> supplies, and I like made an MGK painting, and I included the helicopter with all the lyrics. Is that what we're talking about? Like yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should you should have showed that. She, yeah, I know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, like a whole we can poster. superimpose it oh, in. Was... I would like to see this painting. I, I, Terry, you, you seem like you're good at talking. I want to know what the painting scales look like because that's like a whole oh, other it's... level of like. I mean, it I is manic, it but good. it's also that's fandom, right? Like these artists that yeah. we talked about before, like they make you do weird things. Like I remember, you know, I started smoking pot because I listened to Mac Miller. Like it's really that simple. Like they can <laughs> change your lives based on how often you listen to somebody. Oh. And if he does that for yeah. you guys, then great. I have a little bit of a different relationship with him. I recognize him as rapper first, and now the guy that's fucking Megan Fox, which is amazing. Good for him. We'll talk about that for sure. But he's always had this kind of like charisma to him that I think that makes sense that he's arriving in a pink helicopter and coming down on a pink ladder. Like what other artist does that? I sense. can't think of another Wouldn't person it? that has the balls to come in and like on one, the most feminine color, but two, like, you know, the concept of the mainstream he's sellout. Iconic, man. Mike, you, we were talking about this earlier too. And Connor, you can definitely allude to this too, but we were talking about Playboy Cardi earlier and you know, you were like, I have issues with him because he doesn't do a lot of storytelling. Listening to MGK this week, I'm like, oh, fuck. This dude's like, he, he's kind of bringing like the that principles so of like old school route. rap to rock where like he's he's doing the storytelling while he's making these ballads that are, you know, very cathartic. Mm -hmm. It's very teenage angsty. It like br it brought out a side to me that I hadn't recognized or dealt with in a long time. I was like, damn, I do hate my ex. That bitch sucks, dude. Like it was just like those little <laughs> thoughts that are like cratering in the back of your head. And he's just, I mean, he, he's ultimately a vibe. I was resistant to him when you in initially showed me his stuff a couple of years ago, Cerrone. But I'm in, man. I'm, I'm in. I like it. it it's great. It oh, reminds me of an me era that doesn't exist so anymore. So happy. Every, everybody I introduced to this guy, like, because like whenever you play him, you know how many times I've gotten just slandered for putting on MGK? And you got to take the slandering. You gotta, you, there's got to be some guy to lead the charge to take the, the first couple bullets to enter like you, but then they learned to love him. Dude, Dante used to hate him. I showed him music. You used to hate him. And the best thing ever, I swear to God, is when you show someone a song, right? And mm -hmm. fucking Connor d does this to me all the time because Connor shows me a bunch of music. Um, I feel like me and Connor got a, a pretty good music taste. 
But when you show someone a song and, you know, you, you can tell they haven't heard it before and they either ask, you know, what's the name of this? Yep. Or you can see them shazamming it or you can see them kind of adding it to their phone. And <laughs> the then you're shazam in their is crazy. A couple weeks later. Being well, too shy to ask. And that song comes on. <laughs> and there's, yeah, Connor, is there nothing better than there's showing people new music? There's nothing better if you're driving in the car and you look over and your boy's trying to hide the shazam. <laughs> You're like, let's go. He thinks it's a banger. <laughs> oh, I make like a that's how you know. Of it too. I'll like take a picture of like I'm the like, like the, the car play. play thing, and yep. I'm like, yeah, I'm taking a picture yeah. of your song. Yeah, that's the best feeling, and that's happened so much. Everybody's like, oh, bro, MG, like what? This pink fuck. And then <laughs> you like... see them shazamming it, and I go, listen, yeah, I you just I'll lead I'll lead you to through battle. Just trust me. Just come with me down this road. You're gonna love his shit. Mike, did I like listen to him like that before you? I feel like I might have listened no. to I remember the the night that we all met, that great night at Lala's, <laughs> um, which is a whole nother story Legendary. on its own. Yeah. Uh I I was playing that's when Tickets to My Downfall first came out. And yeah. I remember I remember driving in my car to go try to find your phone because mm -hmm. you lost it. At and Nova. you were like and you were like, What the fuck is it? You were like, is this MG like when did he like, I think you were said something, you were like, I thought he was always, like, a rapper. And that was right oh, when he I put did? out Tickets to My Downfall, like, when he started, like, like rock, like, punk rock. Mm -hmm. And I remember you, and then you just, I remember you texted me, the, like, the couple weeks after, like, yo, like, this is fucking, oh. like, what is this album? Because, like, that album took, like, uh, I don't know, like, no one expected it, no one thought he was going to come out just, like, a, this punk rock artist. And, like, yeah, and especially like, not it being that good. Just and Downfall's High. Insane. Yep, I was just saying like in the group chat before we started filming this podcast like I used to like literally meet guys out at the bars or like the club or whatnot I would take them home sit them on my couch and make them watch downfalls <laughs> high and like dare they like kiss me or whatnot I would rewind it I would rewind no. it I'd be like no you have to pay attention and I was like psychotic about it so that sounds like me with like normal Ralphie. movies. Like that's what I do. Like if I'm going to the bathroom, I'm yeah. pausing the movie. I'm taking a piss. I'm coming back. If a woman tries to talk during the movie, I'm like, yeah, that's great. After it, but like let's, we'll do it at the end. Yeah. Um, I mean, Mike, I yeah. gave you guys a speech yeah, the man. day that I moved in, and I was like, listen, guys, um, I'm really into movies. Uh, so no phones. We'll save conversation for the end. And that was really about oh, yeah, it. Like fun. I gave the whole Alan from the hangover speech. I was like, how about that ride in? And Rob and Mike and Dante and Phil are looking at me like I'm a fucking psychopath. So Tara, I yeah, appreciate I, you. I Thank met you for saying kid. that. I was going to say a couple things. First of all, Ralph, I don't know if you know this. MGK made a whole uh, music like video through like, like an hour long through the whole album. And Sydney Sweeney is like the main like mm -hmm. co-star you had my curiosity now you have my buddies. attention dog mm -hmm. yeah you would you would love it's it really She's good it's like heartbreaking it. yeah and um what was i gonna say oh yeah i meet dude the day i meet ralph or like i met this kid like two hours before ralph comes in he's got like this huge like jufro this is like the jufro ralph, ralph days i like meet him dap him up and then we put a movie on and he gives this huge speech like i met him like two hours ago he's like listen i take music movies very seriously no one's allowed to look at their phone. If you need to go to the bathroom, you need to let me know. The movie needs to come on pause. <laughs> I did not and, say uh, that. And he starts like, or no, but it was, just, I was like, who the, f I was like, wow, this kid is, this kid is locked in. Like this guy is insane. But uh, I learned to love him, you know? Okay. I wanted to ask um, you about you guys about yeah, this. Yeah, let's fucking do this. Well, before we go into it, we have to discuss something that went kind of viral this week. Actually, pretty good timing for the pod. You know, this is a guy who's been inked up. For a lot of his life, a lot of his career, he's rapped about it. He sang about it. But he has a new tattoo. And, you right. know, we're all familiar with the term black facing and how egregious that kind of uh, cultural misappropriation is. But this guy is full blown, like, black shouldering. Like, his entire torso now is, like, a deep, dark black. I just wanted to ask yeah, you guys his feelings about it. Insane. Is this something that we're like, that looks good on him? Or like, Colson, man, like, I don't take a step back. You looked him. better before that. Yeah, I couldn't I tell if it, it was an edit or not when I first saw it. But then I was like, it's definitely not. But I just like, I seriously don't think twice when he does something. So, so what, what about like the... If, uh, it, you went to visit Connor one day and he had the same exact tattoo. <laughs> I mean, I, I might be able to pull it off. Different. I might be able to pull it off. You just never know. That would be like, oh, you may be having a manic episode, but with Colton being there, it's like, you know, 
Well, yeah, all right. I don't think I. Um, he, I mean, he's, I like he's his tattoos before, man, but he's gonna do what he wants to do, mm-hmm. no matter what. He's gonna. Well, he well, doesn't give a single fuck. What's kind of like the point of it that he did that? Like he just kind of you know, like inked up his entire like upper half, like. Yeah, I know we talked about uh, no, him hating a lot of his tattoos. I oh, watched his interview. He's talking about him kind of hating a lot of his tattoos because you got to think. This motherfucker's just getting like, I mean, he was fully tatted up at like 18, 19 years old. I can't imagine. So, I hate most yeah. of my tattoos and I don't have that many. Yeah. So I you can't imagine think, having that many. Yeah. 10 years later, he's probably looking at some on his body. Like, um, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, this doesn't relate to me at all anymore. Yeah. Um, so he said that he didn't like a lot of them. And then I think it's going to kind of just go into this whole album. Um, but I can't imagine, like, dude, this motherfucker, the pain that that, like, I mean, dude, I like, yeah. you guys have gotten tattoos before. I know Connor's got a great tattoo. I don't know if you got one, Ralph, but it's not fun. It's not like a f- super fun experience. It doesn't, it's not the end of the world pain, but like for him to have like over his belly button, did you right, like right over his belly button? Yeah. Like, God, I don't know what, he's just a fucking beast. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's going to go along with the album that he's about to drop. Uh, mm. and I think it kind of gets him swirling again to where like he's in the media. People are looking at him, people are talking about him and then he drops an album. It's just like that much more bigger. I haven't thought about it that way. And he's going to, and it's a complete fraud. I don't know. We'll see. But I like the idea of it being like, like my... performance art. That's fun. He like, looks it... like my cat now. I have a cat named Colton Baker. <laughs> yeah. After FDK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you, like, yeah, got all... to know the cat, you'd understand. But his name is Colson Baker. Yeah. I've lost he, my mind. It's an inspired. Now mm-hmm. you see the actual MGK followed suit from the cat. Yeah. Um, and... But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he'll do with it. It's it's, uh, it's a little... I mean, yeah, he doesn't give a fuck. So yeah. he's going to well, do he, him. But, yeah, it's his a little whole, His whole crazy. career has been led by this concept of, I don't give a fuck. I've... I've been thinking about him pretty critically this week, and I think he's so fascinating because I was trying to think of, like, every time we do one of these artists, I try to draw a parallel to an artist that I listen to more frequently or just another artist that's kind of in the lexicon. And I don't Mm -hmm. think that there's another musician, especially in this day and age, where, you know, once you hit your niche and you find your target audience, it's really hard to do the 180 that he did and have that, fan base not only stay with you but grow like no offense Number but his fans seem rock. very cultish like he has like a, a cult of fan like he has an instagram fan you page get that from us that you know like that, that likes all of our stuff that's mgk related and they have like two hundred fifty thousand followers and all of this kind of stuff but oh I, yeah the I, cult dude the colson page is gonna love this that's but i can't all think all of I another think. I can't think of another artist that has like made this sharp of a turn. Like imagine if Drake tomorrow, and this might be an extreme example, but what if he's just like, that's it for me. I'm done in rap. I'm going to maintain some of the rap tendencies, but guess what guys? Like I'm going fucking classical music now. Or if Taylor Swift is just like, I'm an EDM head all of a sudden. Like that's like the, like going from rap to punk rock is a very stark difference. And I, I just don't know if there's anybody else that's done exactly that. Like, the Beatles would do stuff like where they were very experimental in their music. Kanye obviously made 808s and Heartbreak. But this is like a totally different shift. It reminds me of um, Childish Gambino a little bit. He had um, Because the Internet was a very popular classical hip-hop album. And then he made Awaken My Love, which is like sensual jazz. It's just Redbone and a bunch of sexy music. But I can't think of another guy that's oh, yeah. really done this like sharp of a twist and completely changed his identity with it. I mean, if you listen to some of his older stuff, it has like you know, like the Travis Barker drums on it and whatnot, but it was obviously like hip hop forward. And now he's just like a fucking mm-hmm. rock star, which is crazy. To I like love have... that he did. I mean, it's good for him, I, right? I like, would you really have listened to him, like... Tara, if he, if he was just rapping no. still? No, I started listening to him when he transitioned to pop punk. But then like after I was listening to him for a while, I started listening to his old albums a little bit. And I feel like I only liked them because mm. I loved his new stuff too. Because I'm not really like into hip hop, but I love Hotel Diablo. I love a few songs off Bloom, but I'm not like big into his first few albums. But yeah, I he. To... I think he's a better like. Uh, I, I know he's going back to rap now, mm-hmm. um, or that's what he claims. But I think he's a better rock star than he is a rapper, and he's a pretty fucking good rapper. Yeah, yeah. He's like great his at both. like. 
Like, dude, that the Eminem diss, like, like, there's a couple of songs that I have on, I got the juice, like, just rat, like, the dude can spit, but, yeah. I, and I think he's still a better rock star than, and I think he's, like, at, like, a rock star, kind of, like, at heart. Wait, is um, that official? He's actually transitioning yeah, that, back into hip-hop? I, I wasn't familiar with that. I thought, I figured this was just, like, hanging out. was going to be rap. Oh. Uh, like, I was going back to rap, because he, so his, his claim is, he, so he went from rap to rock and everybody was saying well you only went to rock because you couldn't rap so and then he dropped two number one rock albums so now he's gonna prove everybody wrong again go back to rap that's why his new like have you heard pressure ralph oh, I mean, yeah we'll talk about that yep. but that is like the, one of the i mean just a great rap song but yeah he's, he says that his next album is gonna be uh back to rap so yeah i don't know it's gonna be fucking lord knows i can't wait mm-hmm. but Connor, what do you like more? Do you like him more as a yeah, rapper, Connor, or do you, you like him more uh, as this man, musician I'm just that he is to now? Get this draft rock and roll, man. I'm ready to go. But <laughs> um, Connor's exhausted. No, kinda, <laughs> He's just like, let's just draft. More, You know, I kind of fall you know, into uh, all like the the popular mainstream songs. You know, I I think it's pretty obvious that Mike and Tara are the the two biggest MGK fans here by a pretty large yeah. margin. So we're um, in one corner there and another. That's fine. And I'm also, with you, you know, it's a recency, it's a recency bias type of thing, you know. So I like the ones that have been, you know, released lately, I guess. Um, but tickets yes. to my downfall by, by a mile is his best, his best work. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, so I guess I would go rock and roll. Agreed. And there's there's Agreed. one last thing that we have to talk about before we go into the draft. And that's uh, this is yeah. a movie podcast, usually, first and foremost. And we talk sports, we talk music, but we talk about movies a lot. He's an actor. Okay. Um, not he sure how good actor. of an actor he is, actor. but he, he might be an not actor. the best actor. Um, and I wasn't familiar with this, but I'm going through his letterbox the other day. I have it pulled up right here. And did you guys know that he has three oh, movies like to see this. with Megan Fox in the last two years? They've made three movies together, um, wow. and they're all getting absolutely god awful reviews but i just think that's fascinating like the working relationship between the two of them like i figured it was just i mean he's got a movie called good morning which he directed which stars gata from the show dave by Lil dicky mod son the uh kind of like indie hip-hop rapper the artist um pete yeah. davidson is in it megan fox is in it and then he's in a couple of other movies did he you, has a movie called taurus did you, on a the, yeah, it, the, did you watch he seems that, like he makes Ralph, movies for it's... flights it seems like these movies are not going to netflix or amazon okay. prime they're going to like delta or like united or american airlines this... and streaming services that's kind other... of the vibe i'm getting mike what's the other movie that he's in that's really good with pete davidson yeah Big time so, adolescence or king of staten yes, yes i love that movie that's a good so movie so he's he's good mgk is good in big time adolescence or yeah yeah it's with pete because he's being the goofball himself like it just it's just him and pete because they're like best friends in real life so they're just fuck around smoking yep. pot, yeah. having fun i i watch yeah that's that's not the best you know the best movie good morning um you could tell he, he like tried to get into acting and you know he's, he's decent he uh he's doing his thing but um yeah it's you're like you're not expecting a uh like like a your, his performance isn't gonna blow you away but you know we got into it there for a little while i didn't know he did all those movies with with megan though that's pretty cool I'll, I'll me neither. Out. What, what what are you talking about like what are those yeah so there's the three name? movies that he has um midnight in the switchgrass and if you look at it bruce oh. willis was in it it's one of bruce willis's last movies before he retired it's right here it is also getting dog shit ratings you're that's compete- megan fox holding a gun to yeah, his I'm head much, oh you guys are looking Your at the computers screen. Are out. yeah yeah i just shared oh. that here you go all right Hold on. there it is does oh, that man. look like that oh, that's your guys kind of movie right there him. yeah oh, that looks awful. i mean i could read the tagline yeah. fbi <laughs> agent carl helter and his partner carl helter must be bruce willis his partner rebecca lombardo hot name for megan fox are very close to busting a sex trafficking ring Ooh, we got some filth when they realize their investigation has crossed the path of a brutal serial killer that must be mgk they team up with an fdle agent to put an end to the infamous truck stop killer 
It has two stars yeah, out of so, five on Letterboxd. That sounds so. god awful. I'm not gonna Do I might watch it tonight? I'm like not. Nice. Yeah, I'm, uh, I might Good watch cast. it. But that sounds. <laughs> Emil Hirsch, Lucas Haas. This is a pretty solid cast, actually. Huh? I might give it a we'll shot. Watch. We'll see. Colson um, Baker. Colson Baker is in this bitch. Wasn't he in All right, Bird Box so, too? I, I, am I just tripping? <laughs> No, nope, you're right. He was definitely oh, yeah, he Bird was. Box. That yeah. was like his debut yeah. for acting. He had a nice little part in that one. He was, he was himself, and uh, I can remember him being kind of funny, doing his thing. But I think that's the only uh, movie I've seen with MGK in it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. he's a funny Me dude. Me too. Well, and Big Time he Adolescence. Is. Bird Box, infamously funny movie by Netflix. Um, all right, so where do you go to the draft now? Now, just to explain the draft to all the new listeners, we have five categories that we're selecting from, and I'll share the screen with you guys so you guys can see it now just so you can keep track of kind of where we're drafting and whatnot. I'm so excited. I can't breathe. The categories are sad song, <laughs> which is obviously self-explanatory, something that you play like when you want a tearjerker, or maybe it's just like, you know, you're going through some dark times, man, and you need something to relate to. MGK's got you. All right. Then you have banger, also self-explanatory. You get the ox, you get the Bluetooth at the party. What the fuck are you going to do with it? All right. You got to show up. You got to show out. You got to get people going. Okay, it's a pregame music. It's music you can play at a bar, club, whatever the fuck. Then we have I Got the Juice. And Tara, I love that you said, this is my highlight of my week. You're like, I got that one down. This is the song that you put on when you want to feel like God. Like, this is the one that makes you feel like the absolute shit. Okay, untouchable. That's I Got the Juice. And then we have Feature. And this is MGK featuring on another artist's song, which is fascinating. And then we have Wild Card. Now, Wild Card can be a song. It typically isn't, though. It's typically a moment, a meme, anything related to MGK, a personal experience, whatever it might be. It, it, it's really story time is what Wildcard is. Um, so that's a great category. We usually I reserve that for time. last for the end. So that's just, it's a blast. The draft order was determined, I think, a week ago when I texted you guys. Tara, you have the first pick. Yeah. Randomly, yeah. by the touch of God, you got the number one pick. Congratulations. Ladies go first. Saroni yeah, is so the second I... pick. Okay. I got you, Tara. I got you. I have the third pick. Connor has the fourth mm-hmm. pick. Now, this is a snake draft, Tara. So you'll see you're first right here, right? And you can draft yeah. in any of the categories that you want. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. in sad song right away since that's at the top. You can draft in I Got the Juice. You can draft in Feature. You can draft in Banger. Just don't take okay. wild card first because that would just be a okay. stupid decision. And yeah. then it's going to go to Cerrone. And then it'll go to me. And then it'll go to Connor, who will have back-to-back picks. So really the love fourth that. pick Ooh. is absolutely prime. I love that. Then it'll go back to me. Yeah, how are you? Then it'll go back to Mike. And then Tara, you'll have two picks in a row. All right? And then we'll loop back around. Okay. So it's just like a serpentine. It'll just go like this. Okay? And I'll keep track okay. of all the picks as well. well. And then obviously once a song is gone, it's gone. It's gone. Done. So if I take, you know, I'm not going to say it because it's going to Yeah, we get out, it. We get it. Once you pick yeah. the song, it's, out, it's off the board. You can't pick it again. Out of the exactly. rotation. Dunzo. All right. So you've been on the clock for about a week, Tara. You've done all yeah. of your studying. You've talked to your scouts. <laughs> you've been in the analytics department, you know, <laughs> scanning, trying to figure out what the data led you towards. You're going with your data. You're going with your heart. What's the first pick in the MGK song draft? All I've wanted to do these past couple of days was consult with Mike, but I couldn't because <laughs> we're doing this podcast together. It's well, a competition. I didn't have to, like, look at any of the albums to know what what came to me it just came to me but i had so many dilemmas okay anyways i'm gonna start with i got the juice because this song was my i I got the juice song before this was ever a category okay Okay. (laughs) let's hear it born with horns Mm. is my i got the juice song i will run to that song on the treadmill i did today because i had to love that song i saw god it was (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it was an, I, I I couldn't believe it, and I can never believe it. That song is my "I Got the Juice" song. Yeah, so, Tara, whenever that album came out, and Ralph, I don't know if you listened all the way through Mainstream yep. Cell, but that's like the that's like the that's the leading song. First song, and I like didn't like it that much, and then Tara loved it. And the more I played it, I was like, "Holy shit, this is like Dude. insane!" And that's what he comes in on on the pink helicopter. When he said lights the stadium on fire. Oh my oh my god. Like the second half of the song is like like I literally see God. It's 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 unbelievable. That's my that's my pick. That's good. 
That's so good. it's the intro song, the very first track on Mainstream mm-hmm. Sellout, his most successful commercial album. So, all right, that's I, a terrific pick. You're starting it off yeah. on a hot note. You know, that's if, if that's the one that you're comfortable with and you don't dread any of the other picks, then you're in a good position. All right. Yeah. Now, Saroni, you're up. Would that have been yep. your first pick? Or is there another one that's just like, that? that's no, more personal so to her, I, this one's more personal to you? Yeah, this one's more personal to me. I mean, this is my, I'm going to go with a banger. Uh, this is my, I mean, there is no MGK without drunk face. There is no Cerrone without drunk face. There is no fucking, my life has been revolved around this song for the past four years that it's been out. Um, every pregame, every car ride, every fucking (laughs) drunk Uber, every fucking drunk drive. That might have to get cut, but you know, we're going to throw it out there. Starts (laughs) with this song. This is the live in the moment song, the we're going out tonight, going crazy. Um, and it kind of like matches, so Connor can relate to this. Um, so we did, I mean, we still do summer sales. So, or Ralph, you did summer sales, obviously, for, you know, a, a couple of years. Um, the whole like phrase, like, I'm still young, wasting my youth, I'll grow up next summer. It just fit perfectly to when, like, because we always work in the summer, so it's always like, I'll grow up next. It just made sense every time it was played, because, like, we only work in the summer. And it's just like, bro, you live in the moment, you do your thing. Like, it just, uh, we partied to this song for, like, literally, like, fucking three years. Like, this is, like, half my life in this song. This is my all-time. So, yeah, give me give me Drunk Face for a banger. Yeah. Just a great yeah. name That's... for a song, too. Like, actually, both of yeah. those. Like, they're kind of poetic names. Born with horns. Like, that just rolls off the tongue. And then drunk face. And that's just like, you know what you're getting yourself into when you play that shit right there. Um, so that's, that's a banger. Like Good shit by you. you. can't read it. Great All right, I'm going to go with um, I'm gonna go with a banger as well. And, that's man, so this song. Curious. Dude, uh, I couldn't stand this song when I first heard it in the oh, fucking. Oh, I know it's going to be. Probably like the Cheeto orange Corvette that we were driving around or Mustang, whatever the fuck it was when we were dropping off in Hood. And. <laughs> Oh, the Challenger. <laughs> the Dodge Challenger. We had a, a bright orange. I would orange. force Ralph to listen to MGK. And, I mean, this song, I, I heard it again this week, and I was like, fuck, this is good stuff, man. And, like, if I put this on at a party, I know hips are going to be shaking. Asses are going to be throttling. Um, I'm going to go with Candy <laughs> featuring Trippy Red. Wow. I mean, unbelievably catchy. I've been humming it all week. and Banger. I'm, I mean, I know it's a little bit more mainstream. I know it's not a deep dive. I get it. I could have gone more mainstream if I wanted to. But, I mean, he and Trippy have, like, a really good chemistry. They have a couple of songs together. Um, I think that if if he's going to stay, if he's going to go back down the hip-hop lane, I would like for him to keep working with these kinds of artists, like Trippy Red. Um, I'd love to see a little Uzi Vert collab with him. And, uh, yeah, man, I, she got, like, candy. It's just a fucking bop, dude. I want more, That's like, so Mandy, yeah. It's just, like, such a simple bar. It yeah. works. And, yeah, I was, you know, max volume in the car when I was listening to this. So, take yeah. candy. Have you, and then Pete Davidson did a music video, too. I don't know if you saw that. Okay, see, I haven't watched the music video. I didn't I didn't YouTube study. It. I should – I'll check that out. All right, Connor, you're up, and you got back-to-back picks, brother. Well, I mean – this has got to be the easiest pick of all time. Um, <laughs> I'm going banger. I'm going banger as well. Um, and it's not like everybody doesn't see this coming. But it's got to be Sid and Nancy. Um, Don't take it. For obvious, for obvious reasons, because that, that song, that can go in banger. It can also go in I Got the Juice. Because it does kind of give you a little bit of the juice sometimes. Um, and the, uh, the close my eyes, you know, you could, you could put that on the, oh, uh, the if you put that line. on the Uber on the way out, man, um, you know, the group's rocking. So, um, I think that's a pretty easy pick at the end of the first round, Sid and Nancy. Um, and then I, I, I think I'll go sad song next. Ooh. And it's not really that, it's not even that sad. Um, okay. But it's hit me. It's let it's let you go, um, you know, just an absolute banger. I mean, I I can sit here and sing it to you, but the guitar work in that one, uh, it's magical. It really is. Um, yeah, it's you know, a little, it's a little sad vibe. It's kind of got a sad vibe. It's kind of got like a. I mean, 
it's kind of upbeat, but like the lyrics are kind of sad about a girl and yeah, he's hurting. I think it's a nice little snag at the, uh, at the at the beginning of the second round here. Yeah, it's a nice little pick. I li- I listened to that little- today. Me too. It's a great song too. <laughs> great. Song. I listen to it sometimes when I'm sad. It reminds you know, me of you guys. I mean, he doesn't have like yeah. the the, the, the most yeah, sad good. songs. Like some of them are so obvious, oh, it's like I'll get into it. Oh yeah, dude. Like oh, obviously, like, he he doesn't have like. I don't think he has a Marvin's Tara. room though, where it's like, not. all right, yeah, I'm listening to this shit, and I just want to die in a hole and um, call all of my exes. Like he doesn't have that that vibe, but he definitely has like ones that are like I love to use the word cathartic with him, just because like you feel like this this person that's on a totally different level than you, and you're relating to them on a very deep level, and I haven't heard the song since earlier this or i hadn't heard the song until earlier this week and i was like huh didn't know he was capable of this. are you going right. right um are you gonna take sad oh shit i am up fuck oh oh god are you? yo you gotta yeah throw, i am uh, you right, gotta throw you go in the uh, in sad song category oh, for me it goes like this oh did i oh, put I it i got it. the juice my bad yeah it doesn't oh, yeah. It's not about the juice yeah i don't want to take that one up all right <laughs> cool. one two by connor i don't put it in the wrong slot man <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go that. and I got the juice too because you know Connor brought us down. I gotta lift us back up. I'm gonna take El Diablo. Sure. This motherfucker spits shit on this song, dude. He goes on this. I was listening to this and I was oh, like, Ralph, that makes I was me like, so happy. I rerouted my route. I was about to go to the gym, and I was like, all right, we're about to go 85 miles an hour the whole way in a 35 mile an hour zone. If I hit a school kid, I apologize. I'll see you on the other side, brother. Let's rock. So El Ralph. Diablo, fucking bang, so dude. But I'm taking right. it and I got oh. the juice. Oh, I want to take... Thanks, Connor. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, I'm going to... It's I'm up, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, give me give me a sad song. Um, I'm going to go Glass House. Oh. It's a good... That's so, a good yeah. pick. That's the saddest... If you, if you listen... For, first of all... Hell of a song. Like, I, you could bump it when you're happy, you're sad, you're driving, whatever. Maybe not a pregame song, but great song. But, dude, the guy's literally talking about – and I've watched inter- – I mean, this is sad. Like, I don't know about you, Tara, but I listened to his most recent song and, you know, it's I'm like – Sometimes dark. I get worried he's going to kill himself. Like, yeah. it, you know, like I feel like I'm going to wake up one day and there's going to be a headline. Um, you know, he's talking about how no one's hearing him, no one's listening to him, how it's all bullshit. He's into drugs, his friends, this, that. Uh, the third verse is literally him rapping about how he tried to kill himself with the daughter in the next room. And mm-hmm. there's been interviews and interviews and interviews where he, people ask him, what's your favorite verse? What's your favorite song? What's your favorite verse in any song you ever wrote? He always says glass house third verse. He's just like screaming for like help. Yeah. He's like, and be, like, he's like, what's your, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite verse you ever wrote? And he says, Oh, the third verse in glass house. And it's literally him talking about, how he, you know, almost blew his brains out and he was bleeding yeah. in his dart. Like it's the saddest shit ever. Cause the but guy's like, just like typical fame downfall or you go, or what are you going to say, Tara? I was just saying me and you would like Uber to like parties or like a bar or whatnot. And we'd be in the Uber, like blasting glass house and like singing. Yeah. Every word. That's dark. Yeah, it's, it's, be Jesus. Of us doing that. yeah but <laughs> it's, it's such a, it's, it's a very like, it's kind of a banger too. Like it's it's a great song, great chorus. It's just what like, me and you always want to listen to. Yeah, it's and it's like really it's pure. Sad. It's just yeah, pure MGK. And then at the end, mm-hmm. it just gets really sad. But like one of one of his best songs, I think, from top to bottom. But at, you know, it is kind yeah. of a sadder song. But could easily go banger or, or whatever. But um, yeah, give me uh, yeah, give me Glass House and Sad. All right. now, yeah, and Tara. Yeah, I thought was that your sad mm-hmm. song, Tara? No. Okay, damn. Look at her. Oh. She drinks her espresso teeny all sophisticated. She's like, no, yeah, of so course it you, wasn't. Now you got two, peasant. Tara. You, you got two in a row. I have yep. two? Okay. Yeah. Back yeah. To back. I'm Tara's do... probably hammered by now. I, I, I am. I have to go feature because I'm very passionate about feature. <laughs> Acting Like That by Young Blood. Oh. oh my God. You guys. I was so caffeinated yesterday sitting in this like dingy, my car was getting cleaned and I was sitting in this like dingy waiting room with like, with like old arcade games and I had no cash to play the arcade games. So I was sitting there thinking about what my feature song was going to be. 
And I was like, oh my God, acting like that. I made my poor like boyfriend, he doesn't listen to MGK or like, young, I made him listen to it. I was like, it, it's Colin? It's yeah. We'll get Colin on MGK. Get him going. You have to listen to this song. It's so fucking good. Oh my God. Like, it's like one of those songs that I'm like, people are concerned when I'm driving and they're like watching me because I don't have any tints on my windows. And I'm like pumping my fist at noon. Yeah, Connor <sighs> likes acting like that. I don't, like Ralph, is... I don't know if Ralph. I don't know if Ralph have you ever heard that, but Ralph wild must listen song. to it. I have Connor, listened to this like song before. Like I, I think it's fascinating that you're taking a song by Young Blood, a person who I had no familiar with prior to this week, and I was like, oh, okay, oh, this fits his vibe for sure. Um, so like when you're listening, when you're thinking about it in a dingy waiting room this just happened upon you you're like i have to show this to my boyfriend immediately this is one of those songs where you're like whatever i need to share this with the most special people because that happens all the time to me i'll be listening to like yeah, provider like by frank ocean like off mushrooms i'm like i wish my mom could experience this just like once yeah. in her life just take like a little bit of mushrooms and listen to frank ocean like that's a heavenly experience that's what it was because okay. i was in between two songs for the future and I knew I was going to go with that one, but I wanted, like, Colin to, like, listen to them. So I was like, oh, listen to these and, like, call me back. And he picked acting like that, and I was going to pick it anyways. But that's, that's Did you like it? Did you yeah. So he liked it? Hell he was yeah. like, you can tell, like, it took talent to make that song. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took talent. It yep. did. It Young Blood and MGK have a great dynamic. Oh, Couldn't have done that they're without talent. All right, you got another pick too, Tara. So you have Sad Song and Banger available. Sad Song. Okay. This was the, the category where I had to get in my car. I, <laughs> oh, because boy. Because I, I thought I knew what I was going to pick, but then I remembered another song, and I was like, okay, I have to get in the car. I have to listen to both. And I ended up going with my second pick because I cried. I mm. cried in the car. It was 11 in the wow. morning. Wow. Lonely. Lonely. Oh, I yes. knew. I knew she was gonna take lonely. That dude. was, yeah. And I didn't oh. want to because my first pick was like kind of better, but I cried to lonely, so I had to pick. That's it. a beautiful cry. That fires me up. <laughs> it is, and like, weren't Mike? Weren't you at the show where Jaden came he, out and sang it with him? Yeah, yeah. When he, yeah, dude, when he sings that, I mean, fuck, man, I probably cried in fucking yeah, in, in the concert. I mean, it. I become a weird. I mean, you guys can. Yeah. I, I become a weird person at an MGK concert. Yeah. I'm like locked in for three hours. I don't miss a single word. I don't even really, t I don't really talk to you guys. No. I am so in, the, it's just me and him in that state. <laughs> just me and him. I'm like locked in for three hours. And when he sings Lonely, like you can tell he's like crying inside. He's talking about his dad. Yeah. Um, Just brutal. Like, again, like his dad fucking dying and him not having a good relationship and all this crazy you know it's just, yeah it's a sad song it's brutal but again it's kind of like a like it's kind of a banger like you're kind of <laughs> singing it like yeah like are you not singing it in the car like i'm singing it full volume I'm in singing the car. it in the car and i'm crying like and crying but yeah. i wanted to pick my i wish i could say my first pick but i'm not going to until the yeah, end you can't. someone else says it but my first pick was so good too but i had to pick lonely because i was okay 11 a.m. crying in the car. It yeah, literally led you to the verge of tears. Yeah. That's kind of the perfect identity of this category. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Again, I've, this has been on the forefront of my mind for days. This is all I've been thinking about. This is the peak yeah, of my Yeah, you got a good career. draft. You got a little squad, good little squad going there. Yeah. All right, um, Mikey, you got, um, I got the juice and feature available. Okay, give me, all right, I'm going to go, all right, I'm going to go, I got the juice. Um, and oh, I don't know which one. To, I'm trying to think of which one Connor's gonna pick. Um, I feel like I know what you're gonna. I feel like I feel like say it, man. I'll, I'll sure. go. Just I'll go. It, I'm not gonna two. go something. There, there's two songs. There's one recent and there's one released a while ago. I'm gonna go with the one released a while ago. Okay, because you know um, to show my one. depth of this yeah. fandom. Sure. Um, it's a little song called Floor Thirteen, oh. uh, which is the hardest bar for bar rap song that it MGK is. has ever put out. He plays it every concert. It's this crazy thing where this stage rises 13 floors mm. and he slowly comes up. He's got this guitar, all the lights go out and it's him just 
bar after bar after bar. I try to wrap it in the car. It's and hard. I've never been able to wrap it without having to take a breath. I don't know how his lungs have the, it's like Eminem style bar for bar, word for word. Um, the beat goes crazy. There's a little bit of guitar in it when the beat drops. Just talking about other rappers trying to fuck with him. Talking about how he's beating up people in like elevators. Um, everything, the double entendres, the lit, just, I got the juice. You, if you hit that word for word in the car, there's no way you don't pull up to fucking wherever you're going. Just absolutely dominating. Whether Isn't it's the he like a store sneaky, or like six, four? UCLA dorm. Like he's a tall oh, he's dude, tall right? As fuck. Yeah. Yeah. He's got some height to him. I'll, like he's got like small forward. Okay. Oh, right. no, get he, into that he's, later, Mike. He, he's like six, four, six, five. That motherfucker's like the grim reaper. Um, <laughs> like there's no, there's a fucking... You know, Megan it's Fox not. isn't – the guy's probably got a hammer, not going to lie. Like, he, he's a big-ass dude. He yeah, what's up too. with that, dude? He, he Him and Pete Davidson just game. both walking around with just, like, combined, like, 26 inches of cock. That's insane. Like, what a <laughs> duo, dude. Mike and I walk around, and it's, like, a combined, like, seven and a half on a good day. Like, yeah, I think, I think me and Dan guys. Connor walk around – I don't think we touch 10 inches, to be honest <laughs> with you. And you got MGK and Pete just absolute – fucking grandfather clocks just swaying i mean there's a reason why he's got there's a reason why mgk is with megan fox and she is you know satisfied yeah yeah, yeah she's literally I'm in transformers at an airbnb uh. <laughs> no I'm kidding uh, but yeah give me floor 13 have you heard that ralph you would, yes you would yeah no you, okay. yeah you you i actually i think philip played it for me might have been a peach song um i can't remember what that was big idea. educator friend yeah, Before yeah, I ever listened to that album, I would get like pissed off when he would play that at concerts because I didn't know it. And he he always plays yeah, that song. Yeah, but then concert. you know it. So bad. And then I finally listened to Hotel Diablo, and now I appreciate it when he plays it. Yeah, and you were like, like "Holy sh!" Yeah, that's yeah, just like. Yeah, now I get it. But like before, I was like, "Ew!" Like stop. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little weird to hear in concert. Because you can tell a lot of the fans don't go back that far, but then you, it's like one of the hardest rap songs I've ever heard, and it just shows I love how nasty that it is. fucking album. I tried to listen yeah. to the first two albums when I was manically painting my painting, but I just wakes up and <laughs> yeah, you don't. That's, painting, that's not more of a that. Yeah, no. you're definitely more. I like uh, Twenty Seven Rehab and On Bloom, but that's it. Yeah, Twenty Seven, so. so good too. Oh. Okay can't get over it all right i'm gonna go in the sad song category here Ooh, i wonder what ralph's got this song uh yeah um you know like like i said like the, i just don't think he has like your prototypical like synth yeah, he heavy violin heavy like i like i don't know I, I, i'm so I, i'm so curious i'm gonna go with a little it's a song called more than life and it's featuring an artist who i'd never oh, heard of I before i love that Called Glade. That's great, Ralph. That's such a great lines. pick. That's so good, dude. That song such a great rules. Pick. I listened to it and I, I was like, "Why hadn't I better shown this one, Mike?" I, I I I got a little bit mad at Mike. I was like, "Why didn't you show me this one?" I would get scared one? to send that to you from the back. <laughs> like, I don't. I would get just slashed. Like, if I sent that in the group chat, you got to. I mean, that's not like your. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's not a manly, so you wouldn't really want to listen to that. Like, but that's what I liked publicly. about it was like, know. you know, he has this like very like strong persona, like you said, like you, you can't strike him to his core, but he, he has this vulnerability on, in his music that I just really was not anticipating. So when this song came up in I the, love that you in love the that. album, I, love that. I was like, huh, yeah, all right, uh, that's maybe there's more pick. to him than I anticipated. So yeah, I like that song a lot. All right, uh, Connor, you got back to back picks, oh, sir. Ralph. Wait, can I tell a quick story about that song? Please. Like, really fast? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, well, I'm on the phone. So I got offered a brand deal with Life is Pink documentary. And I had to post a TikTok to that song. And it was this super dramatic TikTok of, like, me on Xanax in 2017 <laughs> to this, like, Fuzz. really, like... <laughs> To this, like, really, like, me frolicking on the beach, like, I'm doing good now. Like, there's just this really dramatic, like, transformation TikTok to that song. And it was, like, really embarrassing to post. I just wanted to say that. No, you wow, know what? I love that, Tara, because you know, every time I took Xanax, <laughs> nobody ever gave me a brand deal. They were just like, dude, like, you need to stop, like, drinking so many whiskey Cokes. Like, you're on number 13 right yeah, now. Tara's out here just getting paid. Just living you, the life, you know? You whispered in every dude's 
ear here. Like, just relax, man. Like, nobody wants to hear about Contavious Caldwell Pope's minutes on the Lakers right now. Like, just chill the fuck out, dude. But you know yeah, what? Your, if your you're Xanax. <laughs> Our Xanax experiences different. are a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know, but I couldn't believe it. I, I literally. That's couldn't awesome. It. No, that's money. Um, I want to get paid to be an MGK fan. All right, Bonner, you're up, baby. Bonner's up. Uh, I'm kind of mad at you, Ralph, because you're reaching. I mean, you're, Connor, you're, you're close sniping some of these songs. I honestly don't even know if you want me to be honest. I only, I only think I've ever heard more than life. Um, so the fact that Ralph is like pulling these deep out of his bag, it's kind of pissed me off. Um, but. Um, <laughs> Come on, Connor. I got the, Step it up. I got, the, go. I got the juice. This is easy. It's going to be pressure. Um, you know, I'm showing how shallow my bag is here. I get that. But, um, I mean, he just goes in. No, uh, I makes understand. Like a, an absolute beast. Um, Connor, have then, you ever got your dick sucked with your chains on? Yeah. That's I mean, birth. In a, in a, I, birth. You can, I feel like Connor can relate a lot. It's a super relatable song, and that's another reason why I love it. Um, <laughs> no, I'm playing. All right, so for feature, what I kind of realized, I kind of honestly, this whole draft, uh, Spotify, just basically was my guide here and what I played the most often. I realized that most of the songs that I like are not MGK features. They're just like his songs. Um, but what I kind of came up with here and this might not be a good pick, but it also could be. Um, thought it was Ian Dior, MGK, and the reason why, well, Ian Dior, Banger. shout out Ian Dior. We dapped him up for his birthday. You know what I'm talking about, Mike. He's the boy, <laughs> basically. I brought um, you. So, so shout out the boy. Dara brought us. That's true. Shout out for bringing us. Um, but he hits the falsetto right early on in his verse, uh, and he shows his uh, – his, his his range uh, with the falsetto and then just goes in after that. But um, it's also just a That's bang. Really you are the dog too. So just a good yeah. song in general. Connor, we Connor, we were on Ian Dior like big time when we were in LA. And twenty four K Golden, we did, that was when twenty four K Golden dropped his album. Um, and I think I listened yeah, to Breath we of the Wild one hundred fifty times. Yeah. Uh, that was my yeah, other banger. feature. I love that song. That was where it all started. Mm-hmm. Good old days. Yep, that's where it all started. I remember 24K I was passing, Golden's birthday party. I was passing or out, the or... Rose Trading Post when Mike, you sent Thought It Was by Ian Dior in our little yeah. no group chat when I was passing by the Milrose Trading Post. And it's such a good song. That's a banger. That's a good song, Connor. And I, for, I honestly forgot about that. That wasn't in my little my little pool. That's a year. Oh, it was in my little list. So good. Thank you. Great pick. My squad's looking what's pretty other, nice. I like where I'm at. I like where I'm at with yeah, my shout out pick. Ian too. There's another Ian yeah, Dior song cool. though. What's the the more popular one? It's um, it's with, like with MGK. Sick, is it sick and tired? Is that is it something along those yeah. lines? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was sick really popular. Yeah, I remember that one. I was just saying, I, I don't want to say that. That might. Like, uh, yeah. Well, that's Good not song. getting picked anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, That's you're up, Ralph. I am up in feature. I'm actually not selecting that song in feature. I'm going to go with another guy who kind of reminds me of both of those guys, Ian Dior and El Diablo. Um, a guy who I've, uh, I, I, I feel kind of guilty because like I've kind of made fun of him in the past because I'm like, he's kind of corny, and I'm starting to turn the page and start to like him a little bit. It's the Kid Leroy man. Um, I watched like, uh, he's a dog. Yeah, Is it, are you gonna do? I'm what doing song? Fuck You Goodbye. Fuck You yeah. Goodbye. It's just yeah. okay. a fucking awesome it. song, dude. Like, just there's like, mine. you know, Absolute so like, robbery. my phone the other day, I was like, you know what? I've listened to all of this stuff on my spot. Let me just see what's on the radio for a little bit, right? And I'm going through the radio. Oh, and a terrible I'm, I'm, decision. Well, no, it, it was <laughs> actually fun because I was like, what are they playing? Like, what are the hits that, like, you know, the mainstream mom is listening to, like, when she's dropping her kids off Kid at soccer Leroy. practice in the minivan? And yeah, there's a Kid Leroy song on, and I'm like, this is interesting. So then there was like, it just made sense to me, like where there are some songs that are just meant to be hits. Like they're just meant to be mainstream, played for age six-year-old girls to 46-year-old men, and people can hear it, and it's just an earworm. It just gets stuck in your head, and you just go. And this is kind of one of those ones. And um, 
Yeah, man, I really that's fucked with it. It's uh, it was it's, it's definitely a vibe. Um, so yeah, I'll go with Kid Leroy and MG. I can't believe like if you would have told me six months ago that I was gonna draft a Kid Leroy song on one of our song drafts, I would have looked you dead in the eyes and told you to fuck yourself. But here I am, man. That's what growth is and that's about. That's why we love you, Ralph. Exactly. Evolution. I, I changed. People people say you can't change, and here I am. So there I you go. Gotta change. You, you either change or die, Leroy. baby. That's your guy, Tara? Kid Leroy? Yes. Australian Justin yes. Bieber, some are saying? Tatted up am, Justin? It's, it's MGK, Kid Leroy. Oh, okay. You Kid have Leroy a cat named Kid Leroy? Kid Leroy draft would be uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I the Kid Leroy draft is actually same coming. Same exact four and do it's a Kid coming. Leroy draft. Yeah, 2033. The year 2033, Kid we're doing a Kid Leroy draft. It's going to be electric. Wait, I want to be like No bleed is going first round sad song in the Kid oh, Leroy. Tara, you could be a regular. Yeah, but we'll, I need like we'll the do, Kid Leroy. I would, we'll do, I would love to run these four back with the Kid Leroy because I, 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 I feel like I go pretty in depth. And I know oh, Connor yeah. does too with Kid Leroy and then obviously Tara. Yeah, and we just have to time, force Ralph. Wait. Ralph's gonna listen to all the same fucking music that we do, and you're gonna like it, uh, Ralph. You're gonna fucking like it. He's gonna I like think this is actually a great opportunity to it. Like a... <laughs> I'm sorry, Tara. Go ahead. No, it's fine. One time, the Kid Leroy was doing like a live stream where the top three like tippers would get to like video chat with him on the live stream, and I was so drunk at a hotel what? that I oh, tipped. Oh, how much? Like... It was like twelve hundred dollars that I tipped. <laughs> To get to the number three spot so I could <laughs> video chat him on this live Here stream. And he was just, like judging rent. me the whole time, but I like love him so much. Uh, this is a great time to announce that the next song draft that we're doing in the month of March is going to be we're doing uh, part one, we're doing a two part Kanye West song draft. One week we'll be doing Kanye West from 2004 to 2010, and then the next week we'll be doing 2010 to present. So just uh we're going like you know what i've done Man, taylor, taylor swift recently hot. i had to do taylor swift in january because she had the biggest year an artist has ever had since like michael jackson yeah. in 84 so we had to do taylor i'm doing mgk on this one because it's you know my valentine's gift to Cerrone. wanted to meet tara wanted to get connor on the pod all of this good stuff i'd heard nothing but lovely things about you, tara connor we spent Thank a weekend you. together so i'm like let's do it we'll, we'll get it out there he's been asking me to do it so we did it and we're doing it up. and it's going great Hell i'm having man. a blast but we're getting back to my roots, all right? At the end of the day, somebody has to, you know, like Cerrone always says, man up, run the head coaching position. We're going back to yay, all right? So that'll be in March, but that's fine. You need right, a leader. Cerrone, you need a leader. You're, um, you're back on all the right. clock, and you have feature available. And then, Terry, you'll be the last pick, and you'll have banger. So keep that in mind. Oh, I did. So I'm going to... Oh, here we go. This is looking pretty at, tough, man. Looking at the I got pad. three. I don't know what to do. I think do. I got another good one for right now. Too. Uh, we'll do, we'll yeah, do honorable mentions, too, at I'm the gonna... end. I wanted to mention that. We do honorable mentions okay, at the end as well. I'll... All right. So I'll – oh, my God. All right. Give me – give me give me Boys Lie with Avril Lavigne. Um <laughs> I love that song, man. That's a guilty pleasure. Uh, you are I'm not such a hide pussy, it. That's dude. why I. That's you are why I. Such I'm not going to hide it. Okay, a true man <laughs> is not afraid of his sexuality, and that is an absolute <laughs> banger. I sing it. I played on full blast. Him and Avril Lavigne play each other like fucking. Uh, what's uh, like Kobe and Shaq, Bernie and Mac? They're a dynamic duo. It's beautiful. Bro. Them together. Boys yeah. Lie, Avril, Avril Lavigne, I was, or I won't say it all, let's say it for the honorable mention, but there's there's one more where I was really close, but I love that song, man. They play off each other so well, and uh, Avril Lavigne, like, just someone that you, you wouldn't expect. They, We saw her. I went to, this is okay. a hilarious story, I went to Madison Square Garden when he played there alone, just solo <laughs> dolo to an MGK concert. She opened for him and absolutely slayed, dude. Avril Lavigne has eaters, and then they played that one together, obviously, and just yeah, I, I love that it. Tour I'm not was afraid. Yeah, best tour ever. Um, best but yeah, tour. Slap, put put me boys lie in the four hole. I'm fine with that. He had Avril Lavigne open for him. It was yes. unbelievable. That and is she, um, it was that's like, a flex. Avril Lavigne perfect. has some weight in the industry, dude. Like to this yeah, day, she, and she has banger, bro. It was like a whole. You got to see her in concert for a whole like 30, 45 minute set, and then MGK just fucking tear the roof down. Like it was. Yeah, I'm gonna be for like 15 seconds. 
Okay. You can pee for longer than seconds. that. It's okay. Because like Avril Lavigne is like, I mean, she. You remember those artists that we had growing up, where yeah, like boyfriend. You, know, you, you turn on MTV and it was just like, yes, <laughs> like, going nuts. It's like Avril Lavigne, you know you had JoJo. You had like Green yeah. Day. Um, just like all of, like the American rejects, like I guess I, I wouldn't the put amount of in that air group, guitar but... I've played <laughs> the MGK could surpass forty one hundred hours. I don't even know; it's endless. So, um, like, now, I... did you just pee? Was it really yeah. that fast? Do you stand mm-hmm. when you pee? Are, are you like do you have a urinal in there? No, You're just but lifting I used to leg. Have a shiwi. Do you know what a shiwi is? No, what's that? I used to have a oh boy. It's like that funnel oh. thing that you can, so you can like piss like a guy if you're a girl. Oh my god! Oh my god! I, I might have one. to invest in one. I had one of those when I was like seventeen. Connor, you should do that because you sit when you pee a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tara, you're up. You're fresh off of a piss, and uh, you got yeah. banger available. All right. This is the last. This is your last. Uh... Oh, yeah, how did I not? Oh fuck! There's so many left on the board. <laughs> just go, yeah. just fucking. If you pick it, so, you, you deserve it. When his last album came out, I was going on a cruise, and I was going on this cruise alone, and I brought a speaker with me. Okay, fifty one fifty was so played in my cruise room <laughs> for my pregame song when I was going out on Connor the top of the boat by myself. 50. 5150 is my banger song. It might be like a little bit cryptic, but it's my banger song. Yep, I love that. That's all one that one that we didn't uh no one of my all time is concert for aliens and I just there was no room for oh. it, but that's a fucking uh I'm say, I know I'm immature, but I'm least not a goddamn failure. Um That's my ring I don't know call. what uh, what other ones did we not take? His kiss. Uh, his kiss. Um, I mean, we oh, have to mention the song. That that's yeah, great. Bloody but Valentine, like... my ex's best friend. We never even took the two. I guess we're we sh- that showed our depth. We didn't even need those. Yeah. yeah. Those mainstream. The, the mainstream. Yeah. Um, Wait, what about so play this when I'm gone? For uh, sad song. Um, oh, I was gonna take wannabe with Jaden for yeah, the feature but I thought of that. Yeah. But... Is that Jaden Smith? Don't you guys mentioned a Jaden earlier. Is it Jaden Smith? Or is Hostler. it a different no. Hostler. Jayden Hostler. It's not Hostler. Fell off. Yes. Wait, is that the dude it's that's so dating long. um uh uh Kylie's friend Stassi baby? Hmm? That lucky fuck. Um, wow, yeah. look at Ralph. Oh, well, I mean, I, I didn't even know that. Okay, I know Ralph. him via her Instagram, and it's like that makes sense that she's dating yeah, a dude you're, like you're that. Isn't that where Instagram, you first huh? met MGK? Oh, I'll, I'll first, tell like, the story. I will. You're, I. I will tell that story in full right, detail. detail. I, I think that we would be Who remiss first. Just Tara we did, go first. Well, we got. A, I got a couple honorable mentions here because we didn't mention Wild Boy, okay. which is just like you know the. Yep. It's just the come up for him. Like that's just a huge hit that he had. Um, Till I die, which was yeah, like the Cleveland, the Cleveland oh, Cavaliers 2016 warm up song was Till I Die. They would come out to that. Imagine Kyrie and LeBron just running out to Till I Die by Cle- like insane. Um, I also like the Sopranos a lot by T Grizzly featuring MGK, a more recent song where he's just hopping on a rapper's oh. verse and he's just going. Um, and then Don't Let Me Go, the most recent song that he had. We hadn't really talked about it, but it is dark and it is sad, and I thought it was beautiful. I thought that like if if this is the direction mm-hmm. that he's going, I will continue to support him. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. those are the honorable mentions I had. Ralph, he has a thugger. He has a song on a thugger's album. Yep, and Gunna. Oh, I can't believe you didn't take. that. I was so close I to taking were... ecstasy, but I was like, you know what? Like, I I can't just. And it would have been too obvious, with, you know. Yes, yeah. There's also one with ESTG. Um, yeah, absolute, I think it's called, uh, not shoot it myself, uh, where he just goes absolutely off the, the rappers. Uh, oh, also on a completely random note, this is like perfect for this pod. Drake brought out MGK last night. He did. I don't know if you yes. saw that Ralph. Yeah. Yep. He was like, he's like from Cleveland's own day one, a day one brother. You need like number one gunna like MGK and MGK was there. I, it must've been, was the show in Cleveland? Yeah, but J. Cole, yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was Drake, MGK, and Lil Durk. What a fucking... If Drake respects you, come on. 
Yeah. Just fucking, yeah, it was insane. I would like um, to say that I started listening to him again this week before Drake brought him out, so I'm not just cultivating the Drake's interest as I usually do. Um, but all right, Terry, you actually have the first wild card pick because you're on the back-to-back, so go ahead. It's story time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm excited to hear what you got. My wild card pick is going to be like so obvious and just like so insane, but I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. I want to. I know what Mike and Connor's pick is, and I want to pick it. I think, but I do I, have another one. That, I mean, you could take it, but I feel like it's just um, like whose story is it? Connor's I mean, point of view. My experience. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It belongs I mean, to Connor. Tara. I mean, I'm gonna go with a different one because I want Connor to be able to story. No. I'm gonna go. With one time, me, Mike, Connor, and Austin Bumbera went to an MGK concert. And I had to cosplay as a doctor named oh, Doug the, the De COVID. Yeah, so Austin had a oh. fake vaccination card, as did, I think, all of us. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. they noticed that his was fake. So I took Austin down the street to get a mask and to make an email. Okay. I made an email and the doctor's name was Doug Ganeras. And I, <laughs> I sent an emails. email. I sent emails from this Doug Ganeras Gmail, whatever, to get him into this concert. I am haunted by Doug Ganeras to this day. Every time I download an app. Every time I do something on my computer, the default for some reason is Doug oh, that's Ganeras amazing. at Gmail. My iPhone calls me Doug Ganeras from that night. And oh it was my God, to that's awesome. get Austin into the concert with the fake vaccination card, even though we all had fake vaccination cards, I think. I, mine wasn't fake, but I did like illegally fill in the second vaccination. Yeah, I think Austin, they came down on Austin was- hard. <laughs> Yeah, Good. yours was. What did yours say, Connor? It was the dumbest. Mine, like it was. Mine was like. Was bad. Mine was like very clearly edited in like block letters, and a lot of other people had like actual signatures. Mine was like a very clearly like edit text and just type it in. Like there was no like yeah. the doctor or anything, and half the time they were like, "Yep, oh, why not? Like you're fine." Uh, yeah, remember? I, I remember we went to. Remember we went to the den after, and like yours just. There was oh. not a single thing filled in, and the girl was like, "Yeah, you can go." And it's just, it was a blank vaccine oh, card. I was, cause I, was, I was so fucked up that I went up there, and at this time they didn't even and it care said about first your name, ID. last name. They didn't even care if you're 21 as long as yeah. you had your vax card. Really, I was mortified. I had, so oh, I had yeah. a, no, I had a clean slate of it, and then I had like the edited one with like the block letters that I filled in, and I actually just showed her like the blank template, like with nothing on it, like no name, like yeah. nothing. So what am I in? And I was like, oh, my I bad. And I, like, swiped. and then I like swiped to the right and then showed her like the edited one. <laughs> she was like, yeah, what? And she was like, she was, she was like, like, dude, you just showed me that it's fake. But like, it's honestly, it's like 1 a.m. It's fine. Um, yeah, like some people cared and some didn't. Like I, I got my first vaccine and then I filled out the second one while I was at Saddle Ranch because I wanted to go in so bad. But yeah, Doug Ganera is still haunts me to this day. Did after you come I up with that name? K run with Austin to go to the CVS to get a mask and to fake being a doctor. D- who awesome. came up with that name? Was that, that auto generated or did you just like me. Doug Doug Ganera? No, I, just, I, I was so hammered. I was like, I'm gonna use that alias here and there. I have yeah, um, an alias that you can use for your next fake doctor. My first fake ID. It was my picture. I was from Arkansas, and my name was Johnny Toenails. And uh, my middle name was H. No, it wasn't. Wow. Oh, swear to God. Yeah, it was for it Johnny worked. and you did H. Not, why would you make your fake ID the last name Toenails? Because that's, like, obvious. Well, nobody looks at the actual yeah, name bro. itself. They look at the photo, and then they look at the birthday, and, and they're like, they all right, you're in. I think, I, I think my oh, dad stop. probably has it right now, actually. But, yeah, Johnny H. Toenails, and the middle name H was for has. So I was Johnny has Toenails. Was. Yeah, it, it kicked ass and never got busted with it. It looked good. It looked very. It looked better than the one that I have right now. Um, all right, Mikey, you have a wild card pick. Go ahead, baby. It's your fault. Right. So, I have to tell the story of the day I met the god, the king, the blonde don. Um, <gasps> so, so there was 
you know, start from the beginning, you know? This is my, I love telling stories. We mm-hmm. get wind of a little Jaden concert. So Jaden, Hostler, Ralph, this is... Uh, Stassi's boyfriend. I mean, me and Tara are pretty much... Yeah, me and Tara, are, uh, he's a mini MGK. Uh, I mean, so Connor good. even loves... With that album, um, like, absolute bangers with Wannabe and... Uh, I don't even know. What was that song? Brain What's dead? the banger, Wannabe, Connor, like- that... Isn't even brain the best dead. Song oh my god, there's brain dead. Brain um, dead. Uh, yeah, mini MGK, great artist. He's Sound playing track. in you LA. Got it. At, you got it. Yep. Yeah, he, he's playing in LA at the Roxy. And uh, so me and Tara get tickets. Obviously, we're fired up. We we're with, I think, Pablo, a couple of your friends. <laughs> we go to uh, Saddle Ranch before just to get hammered on these ranch punches. And we get wind. People are like, you know, rumors like, oh, like they're, they're, uh, they're sound testing wannabe which is the one song he has with MGK. So we go into the Jaden concert. We fucking go there. We rock out, have an absolute blast. Uh, nothing was ever played. Wannabe was never played. The lights are going down. Jaden runs back out into the stage. And he's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Like, I got one more, you know, one more surprise. And then I look to my left, and it's fucking him, man. And he is like maybe 20 feet away from me. This motherfucker's in Doc Martens, and he's already 6'5", so this dude's like the slim <laughs> reaper. He's like up here. He hops on the stage, just rips Wannabe, which is like the one of the craziest, like one of his best songs with Jaden, just crazy, screaming, punk rock. He like smashes a guitar, and like the, the, the place goes absolutely fucking nuts, and like the concert's over. Meanwhile, Tara is like, get it, because Tara knows Jaden, because she's fucking just that cool. And she's like, hey, like, uh, Jaden, like, there's a little after party upstairs, like, in the green room. Uh, like, in Tara goes right up. I go to the bouncer. The guy's like, yeah, you can fucking kick rocks. Like, you're a nobody. <laughs> I'm like, listen, man, like, how much do you want to, like, just get me up in the room? He's like, if you can give me 300 bucks, like, I'll let you up. So I go right to an ATM, take out 300, give it to him, go up there. I go up there. Tara's up there dancing. Jaden's up there. I dap him up. I'm like, bro, you, you absolutely killed it. Keep doing what you're doing like you're the man. And I see fucking no shit in the table in the corner. You see MGK and Megan. Megan's got the little – she always wears that fuzzy bucket hat that she's always in. I'm freaking out. Tara's freaking out. I'm slamming as many drinks as possible just to be cool. I go to the bathroom. There's this guy, Slim, that has been in his videos since literally day one. Since there's so there's this the first pretty much song he ever made is called Chip Off the Block, like 12 years ago. I'm in the bathroom taking a piss, and I look to him like, "Yo, what's up, man? Like, you know, I know you probably do this all the time. Like, I've been following you guys since like Chip Off the Block. Like, I remember those videos you did with the mac and cheese when we spelled out fuck you." And he's like, "He's like, oh shit! Like, no way!" He's like, "What's your name, bro?" I gap him up, become friends with him a little bit, and then that kind of gets me in like a like one layer of security to where like they're at this table, but I can't get to the table, but I yeah. see them sitting there. <laughs> and then the funniest part is they go to leave. So MGK and Megan get up to leave. And I'm like just fully like, you know, this is it. This is do or die. You might never get this chance ever again. You know, look at my wrist, you'll be dead soon. And I'm like, I have to go at least try. The funniest part is I run up to him right before the door and I tap him on the shoulder twice and he does not turn around. So I like tape it, take a deep breath in a deep breath out and tap him like eight times on the <laughs> shoulder. Dude, he turns around. He's got the hood on this mother. I'm like looking up this motherfucker's like six, eight with the doc Martens on Megan's like fuck five, one, like at my <laughs> like nipple. And this dude's like up in the sky. And I literally just tell him I love him. He turned around like, bro, I fucking love you, man. I had to say what's up. Dap him up. I was like, keep doing your thing. I fucking listen to everything you put out for the past like 11, 12 years. Like, seriously, you mean the world, man? Keep doing your thing, brother. I fucking love you. Have a great ass night. And then he, him and, and he, like, he was like, bro, he's like, thanks, my man. Dapped him up. Like, gave him a little hug, like a little half dap hug. And Look, then him on and the Megan went out the back door down the, down the street. And uh, I literally, that moment in my mind is like blurry. I was in a dream state. I was literally in a dream state. And then I remember I walked back over to Tara and she's like, oh, she's like, don't even, she's like, I saw the whole thing. Like, and I was just, I was just in a dream state. I literally, I think I just went home that night and just like hovered above my pillow. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I could have died. I could, God could have struck me down right there and I would have died happy, man. Um, 
he'll never remember me. Uh, maybe I'll meet him again in the in the near future. But God, that uh, there's few people I want to meet in this world. Maybe Billy Joel, Ray Lewis, <laughs> and MGK. And I, I got one of them that night. And uh, I that's think the about fucking, that that's night. The story. So often because I, like, I know what it's like to be with somebody from day <laughs> Every one. Every time he jerks off. And it makes <laughs> it makes me so emotional thinking about like how you met him and like it just it sends I think about it all the time. Yeah. And I'm it so was, happy. And that's to that's thanks to you, Tara. That's fucking getting me into the fucking Jaden was up there. J- that and was that fun, kid's the though, boy too. There. Yeah, that was and that kid uh he's like I mean, he's gonna be like he could be just as big as MGK in a, a couple of years. And uh, he absolutely, like, I remember that show, he murdered it, like, killed it. Have you heard it. Elevated Heartbreak? Yes. Oh, my God. That's, like, recent, right? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. No, I think I've, uh, yeah. And he, and he, because he put out something new recently, too. And, uh, yeah, he's, like, right in track with, with MGK, that kind of punk rock, and he's really good. Yeah, I'm And that so kid happy was nothing, him. yeah, that kid was nothing but friendly. Like, I went up to him, said hi, said what's up, talked to him for, like, 30 seconds, and so then, uh, yeah, just to fucking dap him up, man. And Megan was like, oh, she was so and hot. Her just with her, hat. I know. I was like, and like, this is the girl. Like, I didn't want to talk to her because she's looking right at me. And I didn't want to be like, I jerked off to you in Transformers. Like, I, that <laughs> almost came out of my mouth. But like, this is the fact that I didn't even like, re- like, I didn't even care the slight. I mean, I love, love you, Megan. But like, I was, this is just like my meeting Jesus Christ for me. And, uh, yeah, I'll never forget that, man. So that leads perfectly yeah. to my pick. I mean, yeah, I'm drafting the fact that he, he bagged the girl that bent over the hood that was popped open and transformers, like every yeah. single I boy. My dad and my boyfriend talk about that scene at Boa Steakhouse. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I Jesus. I mean, just like greased up <laughs> I mean, legs, like obviously like just like the, I mean, she was like, you know, the Sydney Sweeney of her time in a lot of ways. I think even like yeah. a higher echelon now because like higher level. Because like back she then, like we only so had so much culture to consume, movie. so many movies to see in a theater, so many things to watch on Netflix, Hulu, et cetera. And now like, you know, Sydney Sweeney has to compete with all these other people, but like she was mm-hmm. the one. And, you know, that's one of the days I became a man. Like just puberty hit you right in that instant. Sitting in that movie theater, you're like, wait, like people are allowed to look like that? Like uh, I'm glad I'm alive during this time period. I can't imagine being alive during a time where you couldn't show that much skin in a PG-13 movie starring Shia LaBeouf. Before like, Megan Fox was oh my yeah. god, alive. Yeah, so the fact that he's with her and, um, you know, I know that he's handsome. I know that girls find him attractive, but he's not like, you know, 1995 Brad Pitt. So, like, it gives he's me a so little cute. bit of hope. I know he's gorgeous, Tara. Yeah, I get he's it, right down he's... Megan's alley, too. Just like bad boy, just like and you I'm know not that they have the craziest at all. sex, bro. Like the craziest shit of. I'm sure you think about it all the time. Up, yeah. Going nuts. I mean, um, he has a vial. He has her vial of blood around his neck, and she has his. That is yeah. insane. So this you know, yeah, they're definitely thing. doing some kinky shit. Oh, there's, oh, there's, the, there's pain- the painting. Oh, that's actually like there's fucking the good. Wow. No, that. she killed it. And Doesn't matter if you trace it. It's still. Yeah, that's pretty sick. You have to get a picture Show of that. The lyrics. We'll, we'll post it to the page because yeah, that's actually dope. I was so, yeah, get yeah, a dope ass pick. Um, all right, Connor, what's uh, what's the word, oh, man? Yes. <laughs> you got a you got a story for us? They Very saved it for you, dude. Smart. You gotta you gotta live up to the hype. Um, I mean, this is pretty much just like my worst MGK experience, I guess. If I mean, there's really worst. Wow. There's really no there you go. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's kind of hard to have a bad time, you know, when you're going to an MGK concert because he's pretty lit and he's doing all these, it was bad. you know, cool things. Uh, but I think, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was a time where he was in L.A. for like a week, you know, doing like we went to like three shows in like four days or, or something crazy like that. And um, Best week I had a of my blast. Life. You're right. I had a blast the first one. And um, I don't think I was, like, really feeling like going, like, again the next day. You guys were, like, amped up. You're, like, let's just do it again. Like, let's go. I was, like, fuck. <laughs> like, all right. Let's, well, let's, not let's, the let's, let's run it back. Let's go hear the same songs. So I'm already kind of in a mood where I'm, like, oh, dude, like, I was just here yesterday. Like, I don't even know if, like, I don't want to be here. So uh, we get there. Uh, we're all – and I forget who else was with us. It was me. I mean, obviously us we- three. Um, a guy that it was will be Kurt, named Kurt and Austin Kurt were there, and Kurt and Austin maybe, yeah. And 
I remember we were all like the concessions and we had bought uh, general admission tickets and Mike's Mike's plan every single concert is not to sit GA. Um, he's sneaking in the front whether <laughs> whether you like it or not. Really. Well, no, we had no, we had seats. GA is pit. Oh, we had seats. Whatever. Yeah, it was. but it, it wasn't the front like yeah. section or where you wanted to be. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you don't really want to be sitting down at the MGK concert. It's not, like, super lit. So, uh, well, nice I remember we're, at, we're at the concession stand, and, like, you know, Mike, Austin, and Kurt, they're, like, consistently looking at, like, the rope to see if, like, the security guards look in so if they can, like, run through. I don't remember exactly what I was doing. I think I turned away for two seconds. I look back. They're gone. The boys are gone. <laughs> a quick window. So You got to be fast. Very quickly, very quickly it happened. I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the MGK concert with the boys, whatever. And then everyone's gone. And it's me, Tara, and uh, this guy. So I was like, all right, fuck. Like, I guess, like, it'll still be fun. I'll just hang out with them, right? It'll be chill. Uh, immediately, you know, I'm getting text messages like, we're on the front. Like, we're basically, like, touching it. Like, we're right there. We, the helicopter's right over our head. Um, so I'm already jealous, but I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's just go to our seats. I mean, probably like 30 seconds into we get to our seats. I look over to my right. <laughs> Tara and the guy start <laughs> just going in. Um, and it was like, it, it was funny because I was sitting there and it's like, you know, these aren't like romantic songs necessarily. He's rocking out on stage. Everyone's like, you know, whatever. And I look over and they're just like, they're just all over each other. And making it was out. quiet. So I'm just sitting here like. It was at like the Hollywood Bowl. The, there's just, no yeah, speakers. Just, Connor, do you remember? It was so quiet. Well, just, I it remember. Wild in the front. Let me tell you. Wild in the front. Was, the front. In the, somewhere in the back <laughs> section. Um, just pretty much just like jamming out with myself. And I guess the one silver lining was there was this little kid in front of us. I mean. Literally the epitome of MVP. I mean, he was like eight years old. I think he had a cutoff with a mohawk. He might have had a drumstick in his hand. <laughs> no, he was like the next coming of MGK. And, uh, I remember just kind of handing off with this kid. I was like, you're the next MGK kid. Like, I was just trying to have fun with this guy. Um, but that was pretty much the worst um, experience uh, with MGK. You know, just rocking out by myself. Yeah. Karen, this guy making out to the right I I like look over, I'm like singing along and they're just making out. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, not, not too, not yeah, too much. I fun. remember, yeah. <laughs> I remember sneaking in me, Kurt and Austin. Uh, yeah, I just, there was that couple years where I just got on a kick. I don't know if you remember this Tara, but I snuck into the Roxy when I he know, played. You went upstairs. I have the nastiest sneak in, bro. I am a, I am silky smooth when it comes to, sneaking in places and I see that mm -hmm. the security guard is kind of slacking and there's this little break in the, the, the sheet, like the curtain. And, uh, I tell Kurt and Kurt's usually on that type of shit with me. He's usually down to break some rules. And I go, yo, when he looks right, you just, just follow me, just follow me, just follow me. And we sneak right in. We somehow get me, Kurt and Austin and Austin dapped him up. I mean, we were the front row. He was about 10 feet from us the whole show. And uh, I remember, you know, trying to text Connor. I was like, man, if you can somehow pull this off. And, you know, Connor usually doesn't want to fucking, he's just Connor like, was not like this. Yeah, I don't, yeah I was, he I'm, just, he's not, a, like, I just love doing that shit. And it's some people, you know, don't fucking, because it's, because you might get yelled at. I've gotten yelled at a million times. Yeah, and, that was a breaks, horrible concert. Mike breaks because... rules all the time. All the time he's breaking rules no, left and yeah, right. And I'm like, let's not like... break every single rule this time. And then, then Nick, I look over and Mike's hopping. I hate thing. getting I'm in like, trouble. <laughs> when yeah, I, I used to talk about Mike, I would say like he is so good at sneaking into places. It's like unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, uh, what a that's a you very have. good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, part because Tara would also bring me to these parties, like the Ian Dior party. Mm. I mean, dude, like she gets in. And, you know, the thing is, L.A., like, even if you're on the list, man, if you don't have, like, 10 girls, like, they're just going to tell you to fuck off. It's really and, awful. And uh, I had to jump this, like, 10-foot fence. Um, but, like, those are the – I mean, those are the things I'll just remember forever. Because one day I'll be it's invited so to those parties, night. and I'll wish – that it, I still had to use the fun way to get in and jump the fence at the neighbor's house and sneak over. 
And it just, it just is, it makes for good stories to tell on podcasts with my friend. But yeah, um, yeah I used to love to sneak in anywhere and fucking, I just remember looking back and cause we're up front. I remember looking back, finding Tara and Connor just wait, like just 40 rows back and Connor's just looking out just like, you know, they're together and kind of just looking straight forward, just kind of like, just ha- not having it fun. But just, it's no, like it was there. bad. Because like, listen, that was at the Hollywood. <laughs> listen, that was yeah, at the, the bowl, Hollywood the bowl. bowl. And Connor, do you remember there was like no speakers back there, so it was like quiet. Oh, Connor I remember we made it for we made it for like Jaden's like last two songs because he was opening for MGK. And it was so mm-hmm. quiet. Like, if you sang, you could yeah. hear yourself. It was that That's quiet. That's weird. And yeah. Connor was standing next to me and this guy making out the entire time in, like, silence. Because it was so quiet back there. I was like, oh, my God, this poor, poor Connor. I kept looking over. I was like, oh, you poor thing. Like, because I know you how to like, I was, like, singing along. <laughs> I thought, like, down there right now, right? Like, I'm thinking they're singing along next to me for the longest I time. We're in this together. We're all singing along, having fun, and they're, like, totally not even, like, paying attention to the music. I look over, I'm just like, this sucks. It blows. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, just not good. But the Dallas concert, oh, my God. Oh, yeah, we could talk about that, too. So we, me and Connor, well, Connor was knocking, working in Dallas. I was mm-hmm. working in Jersey, and Tara was obviously living in L.A., MGK, we saw MGK, I think, four times that year. And mm-hmm. we all flew to Dallas to go to this MGK concert in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, what a day. Remember that pool, Connor? We're up at the pool. We're, we're the slamming w. this whole the bottle. Of, Mike yeah, we're at the so w. daddy that day. He was like, I-, I got it. He bought a bottle of vodka at the pool. That's a good look for me. I said, hey, <laughs> let's go. That was good look great. for me. Yeah, yeah, we bought the little bottle. We fucking got hammered. Jordy was there. Um, mm-hmm. Oh my god, remember Sammy? Shout out Sammy. God, oh I don't know god, her last her. name, man. <laughs> Sammy, Who's yeah, Sammy? that's a, Billy was a there? tough look for me. Sammy, Who's remember Sammy? the girl that you picked up from the airport? Fucking Sammy, the Dallas girl, oh. the bottle girl. Oh yeah, Sammy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so silly was yeah, silly was there. And then Still we go to the arena where the where the fucking right, Mavericks right play. Right across the street from our hotel. Yeah, we walk from the W and just, I mean, blow the fucking, he blows the roof off that place. We go to Bottle Blonde after, go absolutely nuts. Um, I think me Mike. and Connor fucking knocked that, that day. Oh, yeah, that was the day that I, well, I can't even talk about that. It's a whole yeah, different story. And, and, uh, but, uh, I took an Adderall that you? day. I never take Adderall. I took yep. an Adderall that day because it was like my birthday week. Oh, yeah, we get Tara and Addy. Yeah, I took an Adderall, and I'm at the MDK concert. Talking. In a way, I was like, I just need to walk up to every single person in the show and talk. And I actually got, like, frustrated when MGK came on stage because I was talking to so many people. (laughs) But then he came out on the helicopter. It'll it'll do it to you. Like MGK's at a Tara concert? What the fuck is going on right now? I thought MGK knew this was a Tara podcast. I I couldn't believe it. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, that was I'm very fucking, happy for you. Uh, I mean, so I feel bad for Connor in that concerts. moment. Um, I mean, that's a that that's a. Um, that was a bad time. I wish I was there for you, Connor. If I would have been there with you, you know, we could have deleted Topo Chico's together. Nobody was there for me that day, but it's okay. Just the eight year old, the eight year old. You're like, you're the next MGK man. Besides that, no. I mean, we we've, we've been to a ton of them. I think we went to like did did we go to the uh, the one at Waste Management at the Bird's Nest too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's another one. We yeah, dude, he played. God, I fucking love this dude. Yeah, he played at the Waste Management last year. But that like, was like, the like, that like I was what? Saying. It's really the best weekend of my fucking life, man. Like the, yeah. the tournament, I'm going crazy, having that a blast crazy. with the boys, girls everywhere, and then fucking, I just get to see fucking MGK. Remember, oh, Andre was there too. Remember Andre on top of the thing, going nuts. I don't know if you remember Andre. that was when Tara was fucking. Uh, yeah, it was. Is that when we pre-gamed at Tara's dance house? Yes. Yes. I don't think she ever found out that, like, we had people over. (laughs) Oh, that's lit. Yeah, that was wild. That was like we were at Waste Management, and I was screaming at, well, not screaming, but I was yelling at my boyfriend at the time, begging him to get a job. Begging. But uh, I was like, I don't care if you want to talk about it, you need to get a job. (laughs) 
<laughs> just get a job. Shut up, Brandon. Because that's Love like you, there's kid, no but... reason that Ugh. Mike's friends are buying me drinks right now and I have to buy your drinks because you don't have yeah, a job. my friends got it like that, though. <laughs> yeah, you know this. Go we kind of, we fooling. All right, beautiful. Um, um, not that's like all... you, Mrs. <laughs> Beverly Hills, but yeah. we, got a, we got a decent amount of... Uh, yeah, and then we went to my aunt's income. house and, and threw down, and I got mad at Mike, and I don't remember why I got mad at Mike. Do you remember that, Mike? What? I got mad at you. You got mad at me? Mm-hmm. No, I don't remember why. I remember yeah, your we, aunt's house, though. We argued, and I only remember... I remember because... the couch at that house. <laughs> Sorry All right. about that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, Tara... Connor, Mike, <laughs> thank you for joining the MGK song draft, which turned into um, Mike's fuck fest there at the end on Tara's aunt's I'm couch. I'm never going to get a girlfriend, man, for Christ's <laughs> yeah, sake. We're screwed. Oh, I, I hope you guys have fun. If you're listening and <laughs> yeah, now he's I'm, a humble, a humble now. servant to women. Yes, I do. I'm um, a man of God. He has makeup he wipes is. in his bathroom, but for him, but I, he's I, I acting did have a heyday. I did have a heyday. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. We've all had our heydays, and we're all you know very loyal men now. Um, Thank you guys for listening. We love you. We appreciate you. This has been a ton of fun. Um, you guys are great, Connor and Tara. I would love to do another one of these with, with these. Yeah, let's of do these with you guys. Kid Leroy, thanks for having me. Kid Leroy in twenty. Thanks for having me, man. The pleasure. Thank you for having me, dude. Kid Leroy in twenty thirty three is going to blow up. I can't wait. Um, but no, we'll find another artist <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> we'll find. <laughs> we'll find another topic to get you guys on because yeah, you guys both belong on this pod. That's for sure. You guys fit in perfectly with us. Um, but yeah, this has been a blast. Serone, you got any uh, closing thoughts before we get out of here? You want to say goodbye to your loved ones? And yeah, fucking love you boys or love you guys and Tara. Um, <laughs> yes, it's fucking awesome. I, I will do this. If we ever just want to do a redraft, anything MGK-wise. A redraft. I mean, we're going to – so I'll, I'll say this. I'll leave this. I'll leave this in – you know, I'll float this in the air. Um, very simply, the album is coming. It is. Uh, we'll recap the album. album will be yep. coming. I would love to do an album, a little album draft, not per Big song. Thing. I would love to, when the oh, album no. drops, it's going to get everything swirling. Let's just draft album by album, which is honestly might even be harder. Wow. Uh, well, we've know, actually been not teasing. A, not an album draft, but a top three. We each go through our, our top well, three we've, uh, we've like been, we did with Drake. Yeah, we've been talking about this. I think this is a good strategy for it. But like, there's a great podcast called The Rewatchables where they select movies from all throughout the course of history. And they break them down into categories and they talk about the movies. I want to do that with albums because I don't know if you guys know this, but the year 2024 is the 10 year anniversary for so many amazing albums. Like Faces by Mac Miller came out 10 years wow. ago this year, which is insane to me. Like I remember downloading that on Dat Piff. You had to build a sandwich on his website to download the album, like digitally build a sandwich. Insane. Um, but there's so many albums for like that are coming up this year that's celebrating five year or 10 year anniversaries. I mean, it's so weird to think that 2019 was five years ago. That's like the year once upon a time in Hollywood Bro, came out. Can so. you have me on again? Yes. A hundred percent Tara. Absolutely. Yes. Connor, yes. you belong on here. Tara, you belong on here. We loved you guys. Mike's, that. Mike's iconic moment was on this podcast. Correct. When Which one? you were like, when you were asking about Drake and if he like <laughs> levels up to MGK in Mike's mind. And oh was, yeah. That oh, was, I'm going to be honest. No. Yes, it yeah, was. It was, was, uh, I meant to mention that earlier, actually. I was like, you know, does he stack up to MGK? I was like leading him for like a big shebang. Like, yes, he's better than MGK in my mind. And he was like, to be honest, I loved the, no. like, the pause. Yeah. It was a pause. And then yeah. he was like, I, I stay true to my, you know, I stay, gotta stay true to yourself. The only thing you got in this world is your balls and your word. Jay-Z said that. <laughs> Beautiful. Great and, way to uh, end. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you guys for love listening. Everybody. We love you. We will see you on the other side. Peace out.